What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Today we are installing the Holly Digital Dash. In fact, we're not necessarily installing. We're doing an unboxing. We're going to dive into it, do some configuration, things like that for the Terminator X. But that being said, if you have had issues with firmware updates on yours, make sure and stick around for this video because I ran into the same issues. It took me days, not days, it took me hours to figure out what was going on with the firmware, getting the firmware to the custom firmware that needs to be ran for the Terminator X. It's probably a problem with all firmware updates and it is a little known flaw on the uh, display, but I jump into that. So don't freak out if you see me change clothes, grow a goatee and then shave it off in the middle of the video. That is because this video was shot over the past couple days and uh, I needed to redo the wrap up because by the time I finally got the firmware done, uh, I didn't have the overhead cam recording. So none of the stuff I was doing on the screen got captured. So that being said, stick around, let's jump into it. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage as usual. I want to thank all the supporters out there, all the subscribers. If you've not subscribed, click the button, ring the bell. That way you don't miss out on anything. And remember, live show Thursday night. We broke a hundred uh, viewers, live viewers. Awesome. But Thursday night, 8 Eastern, great time, great place to ask questions, get answers. It's just a good time altogether. But that being said, I did get the seven inch Holly digital dash. It is in, we are going to set this up. We're going to do an unboxing on the table over here. You can see I've got a table out on the side. I am waiting on the mounting plate uh, to mount this in front of the factory gauge cluster. And I know I'd said that we were going to use the factory gauge cluster and I got everything except for coolant temp working on that side of it. Technically engine oil is not working, but that's because I broke the connector whenever I was swapping the pins over to the old style connector. I've got a new one. I just haven't done that yet. So that, I mean, everything except for uh, coolant tip, which we knew coolant tip wouldn't work because you can't split the signal. We would have to figure something else out differently. I got coolant tip coming into this though. I'm going to leave it that way. The things that we'll have to set up on this to bring into this are going to be uh, fuel level and then um, speed because I'm not bringing speed into the ECM right now, uh, but we will. And theoretically, and the reason behind going over to this thing and, and not sticking with the factory one is, is I can't get rid of the stupid reduced engine power. I'm going to troubleshoot that later on. I don't have time to deal with that right now. I've got too many idiot lights on the dash. I got to take this thing down and get it inspected. I just want this thing running, good to go, with good information so I can start getting on it without worrying about possibly messing something up. So... This is gonna help us out a little bit. It's a little pricey, it's like six or 700 bucks, I can't remember. A little pricey, but it's got a lot of cool features on it that you don't get on the small dash. On top of it, I don't think that this has the harness, but this does have extended IO, 10 IO, that you can use and send back to the ECU even. Uh, so it's a nice way of making something like the Terminator uh, have a little bit more IO on it because it is notoriously crippled on the amount of IO that is present on the Terminator. So let's, uh, let me get set up over on the, the bench over here, the table with the overhead shot and all that fun jazz. We'll get this thing unboxed, hooked up, see what it's all about. Okay, got my super high tech camera on a stick above us. Let's open this thing up. Let's see what all, I, I've not really done much research in on these, so I don't know what comes in the package. but we're gonna find out together. Ugh, there better be at least a digital dash in here. Quick start guide, extend your warranty, yada, 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 before you begin. It comes with a mounting template if you're going to mount this thing yourself. As I said, I've got one of the pre-made ones that somebody overcharges for on eBay on the way. Here's the display. Honestly, that thing's bigger than I thought it would be. I know it's a seven inch, but it just didn't sound that big. And it is a hefty aluminum piece, so, I mean, very impressive. It is solid. This is next level. I'm guessing if you get the uh, Dominators, you're used to this kind of quality. I've got the Terminator, which is plastic, not quite as fancy. 
We've got the OBD2 connection, or not the OBD2, the CAN connection here. And as you can see, there's a CAN in and a CAN out. Uh, that's important. Here's the CAN adapter harness, which I don't think plugs. Oh, you know what? It does plug in. There, I've got an adapter harness already like this in, this, in the car that goes from the CAN connector that comes on the uh, main harness and goes to one of these. And this is what the USB one is hooked into. And so it also comes with a four foot extension that you come back to this unit. But the cool thing about it is, is you can plug this into the ECM and the USB at the same time. So you can use the software and the display dash at the same time. Then of course you've got two USB extensions for putting things like drives on for doing data logging, etc. But as you can see, this does not come with any of the IO. There's a uh, stylus with uh, some screen wipes and the mount screws in there. That's all fine and dandy. And a thumb drive that probably has firmwares, things like that loaded up on it. So we've got access right there. And this is gonna have power. Okay, this is what's different between the CAN adapter that's in the car and this one is this one has two flying leads for power and ground to send power and ground to the dash. So I'm gonna dig into the harness that we have in there right now, uh, plug this in. I'm gonna just go ahead and run power off of our auxiliary fuse bunk. Uh, our auxiliary fuel, fuse bank, I can't talk this morning. Auxiliary fuse bank right there in the hood. Then we'll just stretch the cables out over here, fire this thing up. I should probably start the car and make sure the battery's not dead. I think I got the load issue fixed on it because it was, something was pulling power off of it, but we'll know if I try to start this thing up and it doesn't start. Okay, stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, surprisingly enough, I did not have to use this harness because my LS1 harness already had this connector wired into the main harness with power and ground going to it. So I just used the four foot extension, plugged it in and, and turned the car into ignition on. And here we are, the thing is fired up. Let's go into the configuration here and see what all we need to do. I should probably break out the old quick start guide here to see what all it says. Probably gonna to have to go online and grab the firmware for the Terminator X. We'll see what it does here though. Interesting to see though, it's pretty easy to hook up here. We're still not getting data, which means we're not talking to the Terminator X right now. Got all of these built-in screens, which is nice. Seems to be pretty responsive. I'm trying to look at it, but also show it to the camera here. Let's go back just to the basic one. Okay, let me grab the laptop, see about uh, possibly getting a firmware specifically for our setup here, see if we can get this thing talking. Because if I'm running into this problem, I'm sure somebody else has before. I'll be right back. We are back. The firmware solution was found. I've got the unit up and talking properly now to the uh, Terminator X. What did I find? Well, I touched on this in the video that I shot that did not end up recording both views of this. So if I missed something, I'm gonna try and cover everything that was a couple days ago. Uh, lots happened since then. One, the thumb drive that comes with the Holly Digital Dash does not work with the Holly Digital Dash. This has the manuals on it, that's it but I tried to use this to grab the firmware off Holly's website, use it to load it up. Known issue, I guess, that these cheap, crappy thumb drives that they included with the digital dash do not work. Good job, Holly. Congratulations on that. So how did I end up solving this issue? Well, I tried a different thumb drive. It did not work. I tried SD cards. They did not work. Finally, I found a thumb drive that uses SD cards that did work. Now, some people have had luck with SD cards. I've got an SD card in there. It finds the SD card. It does not seem to load the firmware off the SD card for whatever reason. What I found is the USB thumb drive has to be plugged in. Then the device has to be powered up. Even then, it did not update the firmware like this instruction said it would. 
But if I went in, let me open it up here. Let's go into the menu and into utilities. If you go into the file utilities, it will show up as a USB device. Now, once it was shown up as a USB device, I was able to go in through the configuration, use the update firmware option, and then finally it updated to the Terminator X firmware, which if you load it up, you can see in this instance is software version 1.0 build 2. It, this had software version 4, which is the one for the uh, V5 and the Dominator from the get-go. But now that is all said and done. What a pain. Come on, Ollie. Figure it out. You know, pitter-patter. Uh, that being said, though, let's dive in. I also went ahead and bought the UPS or UPS module. I bought the GPS module. And the reason behind that is, from what I can see on this, you cannot uh, get the odometer to work on this model without GPS speed. It uses a GPS odometer, whereas supposedly with... Uh, maybe the dominator, you can use just the wheel input and then do calculations. Because if you were to go into the menu and uh, look underneath, was it dash configuration, vehicle, here we go. We've got the speed odometer sport source and the speed input is trans, uh, ECU input, GPS speed or dash speed. Now I haven't tried ECU input to see if this makes a difference. Let's go into customize. Whenever you hit customize, this puts the screen itself into customize mode. So if you select something, in this case, our odometer's down here. I don't so know why it's called negative one, but we can do customize. Let me change the label here to odometer. This part's pretty straightforward and easy. I'll give them, I'll give them props for that. And then if we come down, no. Where is, oh, here, this device in the corner, that would normally say something besides negative one. That's actually your, your input there. And then you can cycle down through all of your options of what you want to see on this page. So if we cycle through this, let's see if we have one that's odometer that's not just GPS odometer, because that's the only one that was showing up. There is a lot of parameters that you can log on here, which is nice. You know, it's, it's basically about anything that you can see through the ECM software. You can see on here and GPS odometer is the only one that's going to show up. Okay. So that case, then let's go back in. We'll save this, come back into the configuration for the dash vehicle and we will change this to GPS speed since we've got that module hooked up. Now, same time, I need to go in and double check my gear ratio and tire size. It looks to be that this information is being pulled from the Terminator X because I'm pretty sure that's the stuff that I set up already as long as pulse per rotation is four and the tire size is 27.1. That all looks right, uh, so we should be good there. Now, something else that I wanted to do was come into uh, the dashboard here and see about changing the background and there USB one but it's not showing anything on there oh wait USB one type in file name no okay so I saved it onto this USB drive I think Let's do save, let's come into the menu. We'll go into the file utilities real quick and we'll go into USB one. Oh, you know what? I did save them all the way over here on the internal stuff. So images, I wonder why it's not letting me see that then. Customize, background, change, USB one internal images. There we go. So here's all the ones that I have loaded up. So there's a couple on here that should have Goat Rope Garage and I'm looking for Goat Rope Garage Carbon Black 2. Bingo. So now we have, in fact, let's move this over a little bit. Use a stylus. Maybe it'll be a little bit less jerky because this is our speed. Okay, that looks good. And we'll save it. 
And now we've got a nice goat rope garage, background speed. This is kind of the basic information that we want to see. We should come through here, scroll through all the different screens. I'm going to set up a completely custom screen next to this for timing tuning. Uh, then we'll have one for nitrous right after that. So I'm going to blow out a lot of these default ones that are on here because I don't necessarily care for those. Let's see if we go in here and do customize and clear that layout and we can save it. Then I wonder if there's a way that we can change how many lay, oh, there we go, number of layouts. So if that's the case, then we wanna make sure and save our one that we just did is layout number one. Did I not, ah, no, I, that's, I didn't, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Okay, let's try this again. Let's take the layouts back to 10. Hopefully it's still there. Okay, there it is. So let's try this. Let's do customize. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing on here. Then we're gonna do layout, export, and we can save it right here to the USB drive. And then we can discard our changes here. Actually, let's just do save and then we'll come back into the menu, do configuration, and let's bring this down to three. Three dashes should be good enough to start. We'll come into dashboard one. We're gonna customize this one, and then we will do, if I can find a spot, layout, import, the one that we just saved, and we'll import it, boom. Now screen one is this one. We can save this one, and Pretty straightforward, and it's pretty easy to set all this up. Everything looks good. I like a clean, simple digital readout of some of the stuff. I mean, obviously, uh, I probably need to adjust some of the stuff around. Uh, I've got map pressure in two places here. I've got RPM in two places, but I've got my uh, wide band here on the side. Go away, screen. Got my wide band here on the side showing me AFRs as we're live. Then we'll have RPM speed. We have RPM up there that gives us a nice RPM graph. Uh, so, you know, we got a lot of things that we can do with it. I'm pretty happy with it as I talked, touched on earlier. I really like the aluminum housing. It looks nice. I'm still waiting on the bezel so I can get this mounted in front of the existing gauge cluster. The idea, I think, of what I'm going to do as far as mounting it is trim the bezel down, Mount it in front of the existing gauge cluster on a couple of sprung hinges using rivets. That way I can pull it down, access the factory DIC, things like that. Uh, I was worried about some of the things such as uh, turn signals, but I've got the heads up display on this car. The turn signals still show up on the HUD. The speed still shows up on the HUD. Hey, we've got speed. The GPS is reading in the garage. That's a good sign. Uh, but that being said, Soon as I get that part in, we'll dive into that side of it and maybe uh, eventually I'm gonna add the uh, IO module that adds the 10 IO channels on here and how we can tie that back into the Terminator X. Uh, some of the other things that we can do with it, we'll also touch on how we're gonna set up the uh, nitrous system through the Terminator X, how we'll uh, have a nitrous screen on here where we can activate things like the bottle heater. Uh, we can turn on nitrous and then we will use uh, the settings within the Terminator X to actually activate the nitrous stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna touch on, dig deeper into some of the features that we can use both between the seven inch dash and the Terminator X. So make sure and stick around. Uh, hopefully this video helps somebody out that has been struggling with the firmware stuff. Like Holly, if anybody ends up watching this, man, get some more information out there because your documentation on updating the firmware completely sucks. Uh, it is just the sh most shorthand approach to trying to say basically, unpack it, throw it on a thumb drive and then restart the dash and it'll find it automatically. Yeah, it, it took me almost two hours to finally get the firmware updated on this. If you are fighting with your own copy of the firmware for this thing, I feel for you. Just keep on trying different thumb drives, different approaches. You will eventually get it, I promise you. And man, sorry for your frustration. I mean, it's really the fact that people are talking about this on the forums and stuff and it's still an issue sucks. Uh, so that being said, hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this. Hopefully it helps somebody out. As I said, uh, if you have any questions, comments, hit up the, uh, the uh, comments down below. Let me know. Let me know what you think about the device itself. 
what you would like to see me try and do with the device. And then uh, if you haven't subscribed already, hit that uh, subscription button, ring the bell. Make sure and check out the live show Thursday nights, 8 Eastern. Uh, check out all the links down in the description, specifically to the tuning playlist if you're new to the channel. Just a plethora of information out there for new people who are coming to the channel. And also check out, you can use the web address, tuning101.com, and it brings you right to our YouTube homepage where all this information is at. So if you have other people asking questions and you know there's a video out there that could help them, just tell them, hey, go check out Tuning 101. Videos, videos, videos. So I'm going to get back to figuring the rest of this crap out, get it installed in the car, get it ready to go. I've got some wire loom that showed up so I can clean up a lot of this wiring that's underneath the hood. So I've got a lot to get done over here. You know the drill. ABT, always be tuning. And thanks for stopping by the garage.